Four o'clock rock here on a given Thursday. I'm Jay Fidel, and I am happy. I'm happy, and I'm honored to have Ruby Menon with us again today. Hi, Hi Ruby. Hi, Jay. Nice to have you here. Same here. It's great to be with you again. We've covered so much ground together, but today we're going to cover care. Mm -hmm. Okay, care is uh, all about the correctional arts reentry. Mm -hmm. Sounding like a great project, and art is so important to our lives, everyone's life. Mm -hmm. um, and you are a kind of artist. You are an artist. Am I right? Uh, I an walk art over. lover. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably an better lover. an art lover. Yeah. Okay, an appreciator. And uh -huh. you, you, you have been the curator, mm -hmm. uh, the artist in residence, so to speak, at the TEDx uh, uh, event, which took place on July 9th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it like to be the curator and artist in residence at that event? Um, it was a fabulous experience, and one of the reasons why I actually uh, signed up for it was because of my care project and the fact that I've been so involved with art. And um, because of my, the care project, I also had a connection to Miley Meyer. And so... Oh, Miley, when, Miley, Miley. She was on one of our programs uh, a few months ago. She uh, was she, terrific. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. And um, so... When I took that project on with TEDx, I, you know, was wondering who can we bring in to, to be our artist in residence. And I did originally thought about Solomon, um, but I needed to talk to Miley. He's referring to Solomon Enos. Yeah, Solomon Enos. It's yeah. worth, a, you know, a footnote on that. Yeah. Solomon was here sitting in the same chair that Ruby's sitting in now, and Solomon was an experience. He mm -hmm. was a phenomenon. Uh, you got to watch that show. I'm serious. Go back and watch that show. Look up Solomon Enos, E-N-O-S, mm -hmm. and you will see energy, total energy, yep. un uncontrolled, <laughs> uncontrolled energy. Yeah. The guy is truly amazing, and it was an amazing discussion. Sorry yeah. I interrupted you. No, no worries. <laughs> So I called up Miley uh, because I, I asked her, do you know any artists that might be interested in participating in this event? And so when we started talking, um, she volunteered Solomon, which was kind of where I wanted her, <laughs> what I wanted her to do. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I started meeting uh, with Solomon. We started discussing the ideas. And I pretty much, my role was more as a project manager, you know, trying to ensure that all our timelines were met and that, you know, we got the artwork in that we needed. And um, the biggest part of the, uh, the event for him was to come up with his talk and to, you know, practice it and get up on stage and also provide the artwork that, as you saw, he did the, uh, the individual pieces for each speaker. Um, the biggest piece of it, though, was the interactive art activity that we did at the very end. And that was a piece that he designed specifically for the event. And the night before, um, his assistant and, and myself, we, we stayed up pretty late, and uh, he was like cutting up the, the blown up design so that everyone could get a piece of the, the design at the interactive table. They would pick up a piece, they would color it in with markers, and then we would reassemble it based on a grid that oh, he designed. Oh, co a collaborative, so collaborative it was a collaborative art, art piece, yeah. Ah, okay, now let's take that and translate that into care. Do you have that kind of thing happening in care? What do you have happening in care in terms of the creation of art? Mm -hmm. And when you say correctional arts, what do you mean? Has that got a lot to do with OCC or what? Um, what it has to do is with people who are incarcerated. And um, so the Correctional Arts is a, a program that we piloted uh, in the community originally with artists who uh, were already released into the community, meaning that they were either on parole or they're off paper. The reason why we started working with this project is, uh, I have to give you a little back background to you know, where this came from. Um, my husband has a nonprofit called WorkNet, and it's an offender services agency. It's been around since 2000, and it's the specific intent of that agency is to assist people with their transition from prison back to the community. And uh, WorkNet does that through helping people get jobs, uh, get their ID documents, find housing, uh, get their legal issues behind them. Somehow this is going to complement what he's doing then. Uh, what Solomon is doing? No, your husband. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so the back, so the, I'm giving you that background so you can understand, you know, like how did we get to care? 
So with the work that's been happening in the um, uh, prison system, we started to see how much artistic talent there is in the prison system. And it's this untapped, amazing talent. I mean, you, you, some of the things that come out of there are just uh, remarkable. And they're worthy of a gallery showing. But these people don't have a voice. So we started asking ourselves a question about how could we help these artists market and sell their artwork so that they can make money while also they're incarcerated be and be recognized. But, um, but the, 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 men, the money making part is important because they need to have some financial resources when they transition back to the so community. This is, not, is this when they are in incarceration or after they leave? Both. So the pilot project uh, started with community artists because we had to have a proof of concept. And so I took that on and uh, because I, I just recognized the talent that was happening with, with this group and I wanted to do something to, to see how far we could go with this. So I took a pilot project, I pitched it to Miley and I told her about it. She Miley has a gallery, see that's the important yes, thing. Yes, yes. And she is a platform for art in general. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's perfect connection, isn't it? Yes, it was a, an amazing connection. Yeah. Um, and she also supports uh, a lot of the social justice yeah. types of yes, projects. Yes. Uh, and she loved the idea that we were working with artists in, in prison. And so uh, right around the Christmas season, she gave me two days outside of her gallery so I could bring three of my community artists with me. And... Um, they showcased their work. I mean, it was an amazing experience for them because they had the opportunity to showcase their work, to have interactions with the public, talk about their artwork, get a sense of how to, you know, do all their financial transactions. And the event was actually quite successful. We had, um, I think, about $300 in sales, which may not sound like much, but for these guys, that was a lot. They were selling. This is right outside Namea, that sort of Right outside sort of Namea Gallery, Gallery yeah. yeah. Right during the Christmas season, uh, one of our artists, Mo Kalai Ikai, uh, did very, very well. And he, because he designs these beautiful uh, tribal designs and a lot of Hawaiian types of themes. Uh, that people really gravitate towards. And so people were buying his cards, they were buying his matted prints, and then he had a, um, uh, a portfolio that probably was about this thick of all the artwork that he had done over the years. What, what um, milieu? What, what? Mostly he does uh, pen, and, pen and ink drawings and uses colored pencils. This is, this is sort of like Solomon Enos, isn't it? Somewhat, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay, so what's in it for you, actually, Ruby? For me? Yeah. Um, you make money with this? Well, it's a social enterprise project. I don't make a whole lot of money from it. Um, I get, you know, a, a small little salary for it. Um, but what I wanted to see happen was the... I, I wanted to be able to show that this is a viable project. So the proof of concept allowed us to get GIA funding. Oh, So okay, we got okay. grant and aid funding so from that, the state. So that was in the 2016 legislature. Yeah. Good work. Uh, so we got the funding. So, so we started the, the pilot project outside with the community artists to show that there's some proof of concept there. GIA funding got us inside the prison. And so now we're piloting the project with the women at WCCC. And so that started in January of 2016. So it's only a few months ago. Yeah, it's only six months into, into the making. But the, the women have just been phenomenal. I mean, they, uh, so, what we, so what I did is I pretty much put the whole project from scratch, got an instructor, put all the policies and procedures together, uh, got with the education center and started to you know, work out all the systems with them. Uh, we recruited the students to come in. And um, we taught them a, f a paper art form called quilling, which is Q-U-I-L-L-I-N-G. What is that? Um, it's a paper, uh, so you take these thin strips of paper and you have a tool, like a quilling wand, and then you twirl the paper into like these little spirals. And then you can start to design, put the, the spirals into, uh, there's a, actually, there's oh, a okay, there's a an photo. example. There's an example of it. Um, you can use all these brilliant colors and you shape those spirals into different types of shapes. Now that 
that photo is um, the Women's Fund of Hawaii. You want to give a shout out to them as well. They gave us our seed grant. And um, so we wanted to thank them. So we took their logo. Actually, Mo, our artist, he's our resident artist. Now he works for WorkNet. He put together the logo. We blew it up. And then one of our artists, CJ, started to work on quilling each letter. And then... Cool. Uh, that's a lot of detail work. It's a it? lot of detail work, but that's the finished product right there. And that's you. I see you there. Yeah, <laughs> that's with... Uh, and that's Chaz Williams. That's uh, the executive director of WorkNet. And um, we presented that to the Women's uh, Fund board meeting about a week or so ago. And literally, the lady right there who's holding it with the, with the red right in the front, she mm -hmm. started tearing up. She was so moved by this gift that we made for them. And they were all so highly impressed and very, very thankful. And we were very thankful to them for giving us the seed money for this. So with the seed money, you, you, you have an instructor who goes into the prison, am I right? Yes. And shows them the art form or art forms that you su are suggesting to them. Yes. And then they get materials, I guess. Yes, we provide the materials. And then they do art in y the prison. Y yes, so that's the, so our class meets Mondays, when, Mondays and Wednesdays, two hours each class. And we provide all the supplies for them. And we also provide designs and templates and different things like that. Uh, so for an example, they all worked on a butterfly design. Uh, even though they all use the same template, uh, it was just remarkable how, how different, different each one was. Each from one the was. Other, it yeah. was just amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the color schemes and the, 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 just the different shapes that they came up with. Um, and so they made these really beautiful so butterflies. Did, did they rise to the level of art? I mean, you're a connoisseur. Did they rise to the level of art, or was it arts and crafts? I would say it's more handmade craft products right now. Uh, there are some women who have the artistic talent of drawing, being able to draw, but this stuff right now is more handmade craft. But this lets you know who the talented ones are. Absolutely. And yeah. that's important information. And when we get back from this break, we're going to find out why it's important information. <laughs> that's Ruby Menon. She's, uh, gee whiz, she's, she's, what is your role there with CARE? Program director. Program director for CARE. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Aaron Wills. You are watching thinktechhawaii.com. I am the host of the show Rehabilitation Coming Soon. You can catch us live on thinktechhawaii.com at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. I will see you there. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers, we have foodies, chefs, we also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet in to us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Thanks. Bingo, we're back. I told you we'd come back. This is Ruby Menon. She's the uh, program director of the Correctional Arts Reentry Program. That's CARE, C-A-R-E. Um, and we talked about, you know, how when you do this kind of um, arts, crafts, whatever you want to call it, in a prison, you get to see in the course of the program who has artistic talent mm -hmm. and that talent becomes interesting because you know you can parlay that later tell us how that works so part of the program is um, first of all to have them be able to make the product so that we can market and sell for them while they're incarcerated because we want them to be able to build up a nest egg for their transition to the community but the program also continues to work with them once they get out. So for example, if they need help finding work, uh, get the, getting their ID documents, all of those little pillars that are necessary in order for them to be able to transition, we help them with that. So we don't it's just abandon art. them. This is more than art. Oh yeah, this it's an entire it's an entire program. You're really helping them in every way you possibly can. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So art is just a component of it. However, because they've shown artistic talent, 
we want to nurture that in some way. And if they want to use that as a side gig, for example, then they can still continue to do their artwork. Uh, they can come into our office and we can provide them with supplies. And we can continue to sell and market their artwork unless they want to actually, you know, take on the business side. But I can tell you, working with artists, they don't like doing that oh, stuff. No, no, it's they just want left somebody brain, else to right handle it. Kind of thing, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, who is the market? You know, you said that uh, a, a few of the members of CARE went in front of the Maya Gallery mm -hmm. and sold sold some art, made some money, mm -hmm. um, and and these uh, relatively talented people who are either in jail or coming out of jail can actually earn some money, who, who is the market? Who's buying it? Um, it can be just anyone who, you know, likes the artwork that's coming out. Like, so for example, with our artist, our resident artist, Mo Kalai Kai, um, so he works for us now. We've employed, you know, we, we hired him. Um, and so we do, we handle all of the, we manage him basically as an artist, right? So I post all of his stuff on, on our website. What's the name of your website again? Let me get that. Oh yeah, it's www.worknetinc, W-O-R-K-N-E-T-I-N-C dot org. And, uh, Worknetinc dot O-R-G. Dot O-R-G. Okay. And because you are a 501c3 nonprofit. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And people can go to the Buy Art tab on the website, and then they can see all the different collections that we have. It's, you know, we're, start, we're still building it up. So uh, I did post a tab for Mo's uh, collection that shows all his tribals and things like that. Uh, and people just love the artwork that he does. And the thing that, the reason why this is also important, Jay, and this is, to me, this is, this is really the heart of it. You know, people who are incarcerated have so much stigma that they've got to battle once they get back into the community. Yeah. People don't want to hire them. Um, you know, they don't want them in their backyard. You know, I mean, there's so many different issues that they have to grapple with, not only the fact that they've been incarcerated and now they're having to make this transition back from institutionalized life to, the, to you know, regular society, but they're finding that they're, they're, they're getting so many societal barriers. The thing that's beautiful about art is that when you show somebody a piece of art, you know, or a handmade craft that's gorgeous, people don't think about you as an offender anymore. They see you differently. And it helps to break down those barriers so that now you are an equal with them. You're a person again in their eyes, not some ex-offender that, you know, uh, got locked up and frankly I'd rather that they lock you up and throw away the key you know <laughs> when you've got that kind of mentality so the art actually breaks down those barriers yeah. and it's it's delightful to see because then when they hear the story about this is a redemption story right so when the 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 the, uh, the artist, offend, you know, ex-offender, showing them their artwork, they don't see that the fact that that person, you know, they, then they, they're a little bit more relaxed and their guard comes down. They see this is just a person that made some mistakes, but look at this gorgeous stuff that they're doing. They're very talented, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Is, is the art Hawaiian uh, in nature? Is, is it local style? Is it... Um, it depends on the artist. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah, so Mo is more Hawaiian-based. So mm -hmm. a lot of the tribals that he makes are very much mm -hmm. uh, Hawaiian-based types of tribals. Let me go back to this one point you mentioned and, and take off a little on that. You know, I like to know who my artist is. Mm -hmm. I like to, you know, that's why the, the biog biography stories of artists are so important to people, to the market. Yeah. To people who want to buy, to people who want to know you know, about the quality of the art. They need to know who, who is this person. Yeah. And, um, you know, because, because we all know that what they are producing, uh, what, what they are creating, is a function of their life, the whole measure of their lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if I know that somebody has had a hard time in his life, whatever mm -hmm. it be, whether it be in jail or the things that led to jail or whatever it might be, then I am... I have a greater understanding of the art itself. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can feel it. It's almost palpable to know the trials and tribulations that this person has gone through. And, and presumably are, those things are expressed in his or her art. Yes. So I see, I see the biography in the art. Yes. I see the life experience in the art. And so I think there's something really, you know, really compelling mm -hmm. about art coming from someone who has suffered, whatever the reason. Yeah, you 
yeah. And, and I think it makes it interesting, certainly for that person, to be able to express, you know, the hard times of his or her life, but also for the market and the appreciator like you. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's so, so true also in that um, for these artists, y y you know, b typically I think people who have an artistic talent are the folks who typically have a more difficult time adapting to the, society, the norms of society, right? And it's, I, I don't think it's an accident that, uh, you know, a lot of people who have artistic talent get incarcerated. Um, so a very interesting connection. Can we dwell on that for a minute? Why do you say that? Well, I, I think it's just because, uh, you know, when, you're, when you have an artistic talent, I think that it's diff it's more, maybe it's a little bit more difficult to, to, to fit into that box. You know, you're usually on the fringes. And, um, you know, the unfortunate thing also maybe is because you're on the fringes and you don't feel as accepted, a lot of them wind up taking drugs in order to, he to heal that pain. And that's the one thing that, I'm, you know, as, as I've been working on this project, I'm finding that a huge amount of people are incarcerated because of drugs. Probably that's the biggest problem. And a huge number of people are homeless because of drugs, and drugs is really the bane of our society. Yes, it and is. And it's really bad here, especially with ICE. Yes. Um, so, gee whiz. But the, but the correlation that you make is so interesting mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, it's pain and certainly pain, pain for people of hard times, um, but pain also um, creates art. Pain, That's I'm true. sorry to say that, but pain creates art. Yeah. And, and maybe it's almost a, a kind of reaction of the market to say, gee, this reflects pain and turmoil and confusion and trouble and all the, you know, those hard time things. Yeah. Um, and and through the art, I can understand it. Yeah. Through the art, I can, you know, I don't want to be there with him, but I want to know how it happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to know about, you know, the pain he had. Well, you know, the other thing, too, uh, for people who are in prison, art is a therapy for them. Yes. And uh, one of our community artists uh, was a woman that, who was one of our clients, and she had been incarcerated for 20 years. And when she went into prison, she had no idea that she had any artistic talent. And she started doing art just so it would give her some sanity while she was, you know, within the prison system. And she just blossomed and she just started finding that she had this innate talent and was making these amazingly beautiful murals, floral murals. And then she started making cards and, um, and she, you know. What a lucky she, break for her that she yeah. found out. I mean, I th to your point, I think a lot of people go through their lives, they never know. They, they never know. Time. And then, you know, they have nothing but time on their hands, right? So e even if they didn't know, they can, like, learn from books and they can spend the time doing that 10,000-hour practice stuff, right, in order to become really yeah, good at it. Yeah. So a lot of these folks um, discovered their art talent either while they were in prison or maybe they had the artistic talent, dropped it while they were out in the community, and then rediscovered it. And that's what happened with Mo. Yeah. You know? But the other thing, too, is that it's a, it's a therapy for them. And so the women who are in our, our care class constantly tell me how coming to care for them is like an oasis in their day. Because there, we create, our, we, you know, I was very intentional about setting up a very safe environment for them where they can come, they can be relaxed, and they can just be creative and create products. Those are the happiest times, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, in my own life experience and a life experience, a lot of the people here at ThinkTech is you're happiest when you're creating something. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is joy, you know, unbridled joy to be able to do that. Yeah. It's a great gift that, you know, the the deity has given to us that we can enjoy being creative and so you are the handmaiden of that to make this possible to reach them in their moment of darkness and give them the light to bring them out and have them continue and, and uh, per, you know perpetuate that experience it's a wonderful gift you're giving them oh, thank but we got to close now so I want, okay. I want you to talk about the event the yes. event on August 19th to 21st the event, uh, I guess it's at Namea Gallery. Yes. What's happening and why should we go? <laughs> 
So Namea Gallery is doing a uh, sort of a lateral uh, event with the Made in Hawaii Festival, and they're calling theirs the Really Made in Hawaii Festival. <laughs> And so, <laughs> really adds something to that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so um, they've invited us to have a table uh, because Mo actually I set it up so that Mo can sell his artwork on consignment with them. Mm. And so uh, because they know him, they've invited him to come and do a table, do some drawing, and also I'll be able to bring in some of the product products from the Care Project, and they'll display it and start to educate the public about what we're doing with this project. Uh, so we will be there from August 19th, each day, August 19th, 20 and 21, over at Namea Gallery. What we'll days of the week? Uh, those are, that's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. And we'll be there from 10 to 3. And, um, you know, people want to come down and, and check us out. What do I have to do? Just come down? Just I have to sign down? up or just come down? No, 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 just come it down. It doesn't cost me anything and I can take a look around. Well, I mean, if you want to buy well, something. You buy you know. something club, but that's, <laughs> yeah. that's optional. Yeah. yeah, no, there's no entry fee. There's, um, and, and a lot of the artists, they're, they're trying to recruit a lot of the artists that are part of the Namea, uh, you know, family yeah. to yeah. come in and yeah. do uh, showcase bring cameras? their work. I don't see why not. Okay, just Yeah, that'd be great. Them, yeah. Yeah. So if you go to that, you get to meet Ruby Menon in person. And you get to meet Mo also. And Mo. <laughs> and, and, and Miley, uh, <laughs> uh, Miley Meyer, you can meet her in person too. Yeah. And you can meet all these guys and girls who have been creating art in prison. And you can look deeply in their eyes and try to figure out their life experience <laughs> and see how it translates out into the art and how much happier they are for the creative experience. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Coming down, Ruby. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>